This is the first part of the suprachoroidal hemorrhage lecture. And in this lecture, I will cover pathophysiology and risk factors. Suprachoroidal hemorrhage is the accumulation of blood in the suprachoroidal space. It was first described by Baron de Wenzel in 1786 after cataract surgery performed by his father. Despite this long history, suprachoroidal hemorrhage remains one of the most feared complications of ophthalmic history. It is rare. However, it is devastating and potentially blinding and painful. Suprachoroidal space is the potential space between the choroid and the sclera. Now, Let's just look at the vasculature. Here we have the short and long posterior ciliary arteries with the long posterior ciliary artery running within the sporochoroidal space. The venous drainage comprised of four vortex systems in the posterior quadrant, each system draining into the ampulla and exits through sclera as the vortex vein. It is believed that these vessels are involved in suprachoroidal hemorrhage, particularly the long posterior ciliary artery. The theory is that the choroidal and posterior ciliary artery of eyes at risk are fragile or sclerotic. Hypotony has long been identified as the main precipitant. It is believed that hypotony causes choroidal effusion and this causes stretching and rupture of posterior ciliary artery especially the long posterior ciliary artery. If the choroidal effusion and hemorrhage extend interiorly, detachment of the ciliary body and tearing of the ciliary body vessels result in profuse bleeding and massive suprachoroidal hemorrhage. Obstruction of the vortex vein, for example by sclerobuckle, is believed to be another cause as it causes choroidal vascular engorgement. Loss of scleral rigidity or choroidal vascular fragility are responsible for the association between suprachoroidal hemorrhage and axial myopia. Other ocular conditions include aphakia, glaucoma and ocular inflammation. It has been hypothesized that these ocular conditions cause necrosis of the vascular system. Systemic conditions are those that cause atherosclerotic vasculature, for example, age, hypertension, and arteriosclerosis. If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash iop dot vision. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.